Hey everyone, Paul Hamilton here from UTB. A lot of requests for a step-by-step -step tutorial on this book cover creation in Canva. So here it is, super excited to bring this to you. How good do they look? Just with a few little skills, your students can be creating some of this amazing content. So let's go home. Let's have a maybe a closer look at this one just before we start. So I'm gonna to go to the original uh, book cover. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit just so that you can see the different details. You can see I've got a few layers here. I've got, um, I've got the text, but I've also got some different image layers here as well, just to give it that depth and that complexity in regard to the design itself. So we're going to use some of the Canva's great tools to do that. Um, so this is going to be a tutorial um, on how to use some of those magic tools going forward. So why don't we start? We're going to do a search on book covers. And you can see that there's plenty of them. Um, so I'm going to go down to the one that I used um, in the original use case. Um, but you could use any one that you want. One thing to consider is looking at the color palette. So looking at the palette that you're going to use, because when we do our AI image generator, we're going to make sure that we kind of stick to those um, themed colors or those hues that go through it. Oh, here's the one that I want. Uh, so I'll go with this one. I love the burnt orange um, and the colors in this. I think this will work really well for my apocalyptic type one. So we're going to click on it once. We'll click on customize this template to make a copy of it. And we are ready to go. Um, so you can change this as much as you want, but um, I'm going to change it quite a bit, but I'm going to, I'm going to stick with the colors and the hues. Um, I'm going to go to my elements and I'm going to start off with my background image. So I'm actually going to use an AI image generator here. You'll find it just here. And I'm going to type in the scene for the story. So I'm not going to look at the character. So I'm going to look at an apocalyptic scene. It's going to be called the journey. Um, and this is a great way to teach narrative structures. So go with your scene first, then the character, and then the emotion or the problem. Um, you can see here with AI image generators, you can select your own style. Um, so I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And as you go up here, you'll see, uh, let me go up a bit more. You can see see all. Click on see all and go down to a style that you like. I'm going to go with uh, a concept art. I really like the style that that brings out. I've, I've typed in my image prompt and then I'm just gonna say generate image. Now this will take a little bit of time. While I'm doing that, I might change a few things with my text. I might double click and write in my new heading and I might just put my author's name as well. And you can see on the left-hand side, these images are coming up of this apocalyptic um, is coming up really, really well. The problem that I've got with my text to image here is they're awesome images. It's very apocalyptic, <laughs> but it's not the exact hues or the colors or the palette that I want. I want to go with these kind of burnt oranges and, and kind of browns a little bit more, even though it's come up in that. So I'm going to delete all those elements on my book trailer. I'm going to go back to my prompt. And I'm just going to add to it a little bit because they look great. But I'm just going to add just down the bottom here with orange and brown hues. And what that'll do is it'll give me some of that color that I'm actually looking for in regard to it. I obviously need to spell it correctly. That would help. And I'm going to say generate again. So over here, I've just clicked on the elements that I don't want. I'm going to keep the text. I'm going to keep that heading at the top. I might change that later on, the colors, but we'll see how it all works. Now, as that's working now, play around with the text. Now, these are a lot better. This is giving me a little bit more orange and kind of that, that look that I'm after. Now, I kind of like this one here but there's some things about it that's not going to work. So if I click on it, you can see it doesn't really resize. Now I could resize it by dragging the little anchor points, but it's kind of stretches and masks it a little bit. So I'm going to go up to edit photo and I'm going to use the first of my AI tools and I'm going to use something called magic expand. Look at this. So when I click on magic expand, I'm going to make it go for the whole page. And what that'll do is it will fill the gaps and make that canvas size the same one as the image or the image the same size as the canvas size. And so let's see what it comes up with. It's going to give me four options. Now let's have a look here. It's going to take a little while. Oh, this is looking good. It's giving me some space kind of things too. That's pretty cool. So I kind of like that one at the top left, but we've also got another problem. So it's filled it up beautifully. So I love that. But you can see here, it's got this little person here and I really don't want that. That's kind of getting away from my scene and what I want to do. So down the bottom, after I've done my expand, my magic expand, right down the bottom, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll see I press done. That will do it for me. 
And if I zoom out here, I might change the text color because you can see here, if I change that to white now, it's really gonna pop a little bit. Yeah, that looks much better now that I've got a background. Oh, that's looking really good, but I don't want this kind of soldier or this person in the scene. See that, see that person there? I don't want them. So I'm gonna use one of my other AI magic tools. So if I click on my image and I go up to the top edit photo, I can do magic eraser. Now this works, you have to have a play around with this to see how much it works and, and its effectiveness, but I find it's pretty helpful for this sort of project. I'm just gonna do a quick magic get rid of it. And then it will do that automatically. And down the bottom, I'm just gonna press done. So I can start to compose my scene by getting rid of elements, increasing the canvas size. And look at that, that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so down the bottom here, I'm gonna to go to edit photo again. That's looking really good. So I've got my scene, my orientation of my narrative. Now I'm gonna go back and do a different search. This time I'm gonna search for the character. So this is where your students can really build on their literacy skills. I'm gonna look for a teenage boy um, with a red hoodie. Um, and I'm gonna have him looking at a scene. Now I'm gonna do this a couple of times because I want you to know that you're not gonna get it right the first time. In fact, it's good to really build on your prompt writing. Um, obviously spelling helps again. <laughs> um, but what we wanna do is I'm looking for a character that I can position in that scene where he is basically looking at that apocalyptic scene. Now, you can tell here, um, and I'm just gonna press generate image down the bottom when I'm pretty happy with it. So just, I'm also gonna select the same style. So I need to go down and make sure that I do that concept art. And I'm gonna do generate image. Now this is really great for students that are reluctant writers, getting them to really think about descriptive words, thinking about character development, thinking about scene setting and orientation. So this is a great one for literacy. Um, I'm just gonna change these fonts while that's kind of coming up with a new image because I really wanna click on the text, change the fonts and make sure that looks pretty good. Let's have a look and we'll see. Oh, look, that's pretty good. But unfortunately I want the character a full body shot with the legs that are kind of standing on the street. So I wanted to demonstrate this because you're never gonna get it right the first time. So go back, improve your prompt writing and get the result that you actually need. So I'm gonna say this time, uh, I'll leave the red hoodie out. I'm gonna say a teenage boy looking over um, a deserted street. Um, and I only really want the posture of the boy. I'm not worried about the apocalyptic scene because I'm gonna get rid of the background. So let me fix up the spelling here. Um, what else can I put? Let's put, um, Oh yeah, let's let's put in the style in the style of brown and orange hues too. Let's let's include that um, color palette as well, just so that we're going to get some consistency with our image. I don't need it perfect, but I I certainly don't want it bright pink and and white and really standing out. I'm going to go down to my concept art again, uh, down a little bit. Here it is. Here I'm going to say generate image. I'm gonna copy that because sometimes I don't wanna type it out each time, little tip. You can actually paste it in in a, in a different um, application so that you can just paste it in. And what we're gonna do here is as that's doing that, I'm hoping this time that I've got a, like a character that's kind of looking out over this, oh, look at this bottom left one. I've also got the top right, that's looking good too. I'm gonna to go with this one. I'm gonna click on it once and you can see it's got a background. Now I can go up to edit photo and use the first one, which is background remover, BG remover. And that will get rid of the background, which allows me to start dealing with layers. Look at this, I can resize that. Oh, how good is this? Not only does it allow me to build composition, but it also gives me that depth, gives me that kind of elements of that person, almost like a, a pop out picture book. That's looking really good. Um, I've got one more to do this. I'm gonna delete that. And this time I'm gonna say a teenage boy with a worried face, because I just want a close up of the face. I'm gonna select my um, style that I want, and I can play around with this positioning. It does a really great job, everyone, of removing the background. Look at that. That's looking really great for a book cover. I can kind of start to picture it. Now, this is not what I wanted. For a start, it hasn't got the right hues and the right style. So I forgot to put in my orange and brown hues. So I'm gonna do this again. 
once again to demonstrate that you never get it right the first time. So let's put uh, with brown and orange hues and just see if that's the only change that I need to make. Now with this one, we're gonna do it a little bit differently. So I've got the scene set, I've got the character, and now I'm looking at the problem or maybe looking at some expression of the character. So I'm looking at different elements of a narrative. And we're gonna do something cool with this one. This is gonna take it to the next kind of professional level. Um, all right, this is much better. Um, I've got a worried face. Which one am I gonna, let me just see what comes up in this bottom right here, because I certainly want the, yeah, I might go with that one. That's a nice worried look. So I'm gonna click on that one there. That'll bring it in. I'm gonna go to edit photo and remove background again. And this time I'm gonna do something pretty special with it. I'm gonna change the opacity. So once that background's gone, I'm gonna resize it. I'll go up to opacity, transparency, and I'm gonna make it really, really see-throughy. I'm not sure if that's a word, but I'm gonna go with it. Very transparent. I'm gonna make that nice and big. And this is gonna give me the complexity in my image. Um, I'm gonna resize it, nice and big, position it. And then I'm gonna go up to the top where it says position, and I'm gonna take it down just one layer, back one, so that the boy at the front standing is still in focus and this one's kind of almost like a dream like i'm going to make that transparency a little bit less oh that's looking awesome so take a look at that that's really given me lots of layers it's given me so much that a book trailer or even a movie trailer gives it's not just the one image we're starting to play with compositions and and opacity and looking at different positions and you can play around with those different layers now um, which is awesome to do. I think that's looking pretty good like that at the moment. How good does that look? Really nice book trailer, which I can build a story around. Uh, if I zoom in, look at that, different layers. It's looking really, really good. So what I'll probably do with that is go up to my share. And I might actually just download that as a PNG, as an image file. It could be a JPEG or a PNG, certainly not a PDF at this stage. And our last step is just looking at bringing it into a mock-up, which puts it on the actual book cover itself. So I'm going to download that. And I'm pretty happy with the, with the content of that. I hope you can see the benefits of literacy and starting to use this with your students as a kind of stimulus for getting them to write. Um, lots of possibilities. I'll go back home. This time I might just go with a poster template, like a landscape poster template. And I might go up to my downloads and just drag that image in just to see how it looks again. Oh, it's not there. I need to drag it. Sorry, I'm going to go off the screen here and just drag that from my downloads. There it is there. And I'll, this time I'm going to go up to my, I'm going to tap on it to select it, click on it to select it. And then I'm going to go up to the top where it says edit photo again. So I'm using that edit photo top left uh, quite a lot. And this time I'm going to go down and I'm gonna use an app called Mockups and you can get this for free. Uh, so look on your apps and look for mockups. And you can see here a whole lot of mockups that come up. I'm gonna to go to print, see all, because it is a book cover. Book covers are print, even though you can get digital eBooks. And I'm gonna look for a nice kind of image that I can kind of um, drag onto and give me that kind of mockup of what it's gonna look like in real life. So, or oh, this one looks good. So uh, a lady holding a book. So I'll delete my, my image. I'll resize this just by dragging those anchor points. Make it nice and big. And then all I need to do is go to my uploads and drag that directly onto the book cover like that. Now, when it comes in, it might take a, a, a couple of seconds for it to come over, so just be patient. It hasn't filled the book, that's okay. We're gonna go up to edit again. And this time in the mockups, we're gonna go to image crop fill. And what that'll do is it'll just fill it up on the entire mockup book. Down the bottom, eventually we're gonna do apply changes because the apply changes, um, you can see here, it's not actually changing it because I haven't applied the changes but this is just a great way to get your designs looking in a different kind of perspective. How good does that look? I'm super excited. We've got this beautiful book cover with different complexities on the layers using AI tools. We're gonna to download that image as well. And we've got this beautiful mock-up of our book design of the journey, an apocalyptic journey of this young boy. Um, super excited. That looks amazing. Super easy to do. And we're using lots of AI tools 
in Canva to really create that professional look going forward, which I'm super excited about. If you love this, please share this with other schools, other teachers, uh, play it for your students. Um, we've gone through a lot of the AI Magic Studio school, uh, skills in Canva, which is awesome. Get in touch with me if you want training, one-on-one -on -one training, or if you want me to come into your school, that's where you find me on social media. I share lots of creative stuff, hopefully across a range of different things. I hope you enjoyed that. Give us a like in YouTube. Give us a little comment about if you liked it or not. Hopefully you found it useful. Paul Hamilton here from UTB.